This video will walk you through constructing a simple box with a detachable lid. And you can use this process no matter what size or shape your box is, and no matter what sort of stitchery you've covered it with. To make the base of your box, these are the pieces you'll need. You're going to need one bottom piece, and then you'll need four sides. And the widths of these sides need to match the width of the bottom piece, just like so. Now to join these, I'm going to use a pretty long strand of yarn. Hopefully, I want to be able to stitch all the way around the entire perimeter of this bottom piece. To begin, you'll take one side and the bottom, and you'll place them with the wrong sides together, right sides facing out. And then what we're going to do is stitch them together using a simple whip stitch. And this is a subject of another video I've done, so I won't go into a lot of detail on how to do the stitch. just want to give you a couple of tips specifically for constructing a box. First of all, be sure and pull these stitches pretty tight. What you're looking for is a join that's pretty stiff here, holds its shape well, like you see here. And then also, as you're pulling stitches through, this is going to happen to you quite a bit. You're going to see these tangles in your yarn. The reason they're happening is because our hands naturally twist the yarn as we're stitching. If you hold your work in one hand and the needle in the other and you bring them together, you're very likely going to see the yarn twist up just like this. So to fix that, just twirl your needle in the opposite direction. And then when you bring the two sides together, you should notice the thread stops twisting and then it's safe to stitch again. So once you've stitched your way to the end of this side and you've taken your last stitch and the last set of holes, take a second stitch there. That's a good tip for coverage. We'll return to it again and again. Then you can open the pieces out, turn the work, leave that yarn attached, and then we'll bring the second side into play. We'll go ahead and set that one up so that it is right sides facing out against the bottom piece with the ends of the canvas matching up, right? And then we'll begin whip stitching them together just like we've been doing. And just to make a point, that twisted yarn thing is going to happen to you very likely again and again as you're doing this stitching. So just take your time, untangle your yarn, and keep going. You'll save a lot of wear and tear on your yarn that way. So once you've made your way to the end of this side, we're going to do the same exact thing. You want to take two stitches in that last set of holes, and then we'll open the work out again and turn it once more, keep the yarn attached, and we'll bring the third side. And it's exactly the same process. Wrong sides together and start whip stitching. Sometimes a strand of yarn just runs short, so if you need to end it and start a new one, here's how to do that. Open the work out and then put the yarn just through one side of the canvas to make a single stitch. And then on the back, run the needle through some stitches that are right nearby at the back of the work. Then you can go ahead and cut the yarn close. Then you can thread up your needle with some fresh yarn. And then just in the opposite piece of canvas, bring your needle up through the very next hole. And then refold the canvas together. Leave a little tail of that yarn between the layers and keep stitching. And we covered this starting and stopping process a little more deeply in the video on whip stitch, so you can go there if you want more data on it. So then fast forwarding us to the point where we have the fourth side stitched on and we've taken our last stitch there. What we'll do now is just run the needle behind some stitches here at the back of the work to finish it off. And then you can cut it close to the work. And now we'll be able to fold these sides up to make the box shape. And we're going to make some seams here at the corners. Now this is really the only point in the construction when I recommend tying a knot in your yarn. The way that I do that is I wrap it around the tip of my finger, and then I roll that off of my finger like so. And that makes a little loop, and then I'll pull that loop, and it forms a knot. But you can use any knot method you like. What I do with that 
is I open out my canvas and I figure out what corner I'm going to stitch up first and then pass the needle under some stitches at the back of the work and allow this little knot then to catch. Now what you do is you bring the needle up through the first hole in either side of the canvas, doesn't matter which side you start with, pull that all the way through and then fold the canvas into that nice 90 degree corner. Now we'll just continue with our normal whip stitch. Take a complete stitch through that first set of holes and when you pull that you should see what all that extra stitching has been doing for us. See how it makes a nice coverage there at the corner? That's why we take two stitches. And then you just keep whip stitching and feel free to turn the work whichever way you want to so it's most comfortable to handle. I tend to like to do my whip stitching passing the needle upward so that's the direction I'm going to hold this as I stitch. Now you want to make sure that the ends of the canvas at the top edge of the box are lining up. Just double check it as you go. They should line up naturally. And then when you reach the last set of holes take one stitch and then pass your needle just through the one side on the opposite side. So all I'm doing is making one little stitch across the topmost set of holes there. And that will bring my yarn to the wrong side of the canvas and that allows me to finish it. So as usual I'm going to pass the needle through a few stitches at the back of the work and while I'm here at the front side it's pretty easy to grab my needle and pull that through so that I can easily cut the yarn. And then I will proceed to stitch the remaining three corners together. Doesn't that look nice? We'll just do the same thing there and there and there. A couple tips to help you with that. When you get down to the fourth side, open out the sides of your box like this to allow you to bring that knot in and catch it. You can't hurt it, it'll just make it a lot easier to reach in so that you can start stitching. And then when you finish your last stitch on the last corner, it'll actually be a little hard to find an easy place to put your needle through the back of the work. It's hard to get it back out again. So what you want to do instead is just simply allow the needle to pass right through the wall of the box won't hurt a thing. You may find it a little hard to grip with your fingers so get yourself a set of needle nose pliers and then you can easily pull it straight through. And then it's just a matter of stretching the yarn a little bit taut and cutting it right against the surface of the box and just fluff the stitches over it and it'll be totally invisible. So now we need to stitch an edging along this top edge of the box and the best place to start that is at the center of one side like this. We're going to use a basic overcast stitch and again I have a video all about this stitch so I won't go into a ton of detail on how that's done. Just go watch that video and you can see it. Similarly to when we whip stitch the pieces together, I want you to always take two stitches at the corners. And when we're doing this overcast, that means two stitches in each piece that meets at the corner. So I'm going to take two stitches at the last set of holes on this piece, and then I'll move to the next side and I'll take two stitches through the first set of holes here. And what that's going to do is just give me a nice coverage there at the corner so I can't see any plastic sticking out from my stitches. See how that looks? Very nice. When you have the last stitch done, then to finish it, you're going to pass your needle again through the back of the work, but go straight down this time because you want the yarn to lay flat. And go ahead and poke the needle straight out through the bottom of the box kind of like we did before. And your needle nose pliers might make it a little easier to pull that through like this. And then when you pull it tight it'll look like an overcast stitch and you can simply cut it flush with the bottom of the box and that'll be invisible. And that's the base of your box all finished. Now making a lid for your box is exactly the same process. You want to start with a top piece that is one row of squares larger on all sides than the bottom piece. See how these are different sizes? 
And then you'll cut the sides, of course, so that they're the same width as the sides of your top piece. When it's all stitched together, then, the top will nest nicely with the base.